should have all received by now the press release. And uh, we'll have this time to have available on the call to answer your questions. Peter Harvey, who is one of the four external advisors who participated in the review of the evidence and the investigation. After he's answered some of your questions, we'll excuse Peter and then have on the line from the league office, Todd Jones, who, as you know, is the NFL special counsel for conduct, who will answer additional questions. We're also joining us here in the room is Joe Lockhart, Executive Vice President of Communications. So we'll begin now with Peter with brief opening remarks. Uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, Peter Harvey here. Um, the commissioner has made a decision here uh, that was his own. Um, I served on an advisory committee. I was one of four advisors that offered our, my own opinion uh, to the commissioner with respect to the extensive evidentiary record here. Uh, in my view, this was a, a very thorough investigation. Uh, you should know that with respect to this advisory committee, the commissioner talked with each of us separately. Um, we certainly did not tell the commissioner what to do. This was his decision to make. Uh, we were not authorized to decide anything, <clears throat> whether it be a violation or whether it be discipline. Um, we also did not speak to the commissioner as a group. Uh, I played no role, and to my knowledge, none of the other advisors played any role in preparing the letter. Uh, I did not see a draft of it. Um, and um, what, we had, what we did do, though, is we read the rather extensive record of the investigation. There were over 100 exhibits. Uh, to the investigation. The investigative report exceeded 160 pages. We also uh, reviewed, each of us individually, the submissions by Mr. Elliott's representatives. We studied both. Uh, we examined very carefully the defense arguments. Uh, and we came to the conclusion, at least I reached the conclusion uh, individually, that Mr. Elliott engaged in physical force against Ms. Thompson and that it caused injury. Now, let me share with you uh, how I came to that conclusion myself. There is an eyewitness here. The eyewitness is Tiffany Thompson herself. She is a, a victim and a survivor. Um, she took photos of her injuries. Uh, as the league examined the metadata in the phone, with respect to those photos, the league discovered the date on which those photos were taken. And they were taken the same day as Ms. Thompson alleged she was injured by Mr. Elliott. Um, we also examined the reports of two medical experts who are knowledgeable about violence issues and evaluating injuries of violence. And these medical experts corroborated many of the statements that Ms. Thompson made. Um, we also examined the, as I said before, the submissions offered by Mr. Elliott's representatives. And um, one thing that was significant to us was many of these people offered affidavits. They declined to be interviewed by the NFL's investigators which raised suspicions in our minds about uh, the veracity of these witnesses. In, um, in at least one of the affidavits that I reviewed, uh, the, the information uh, was different in the affidavit than uh, the witness gave to NFL's investigators when they talked to this particular witness. We also examined the arguments made by Mr. Elliott's representatives, and the arguments seemed to be theoretical. They did not seem to be supported by any witness, any document, any other substantive evidence. And so, um, we, as I evaluated the information, I came to the conclusion that Physical force was used by Mr. Elliott against Ms. Thompson. It caused her injury, and that it violated, uh, in my view, 
the personal conduct policy. But again, I just gave my own opinion to the commissioner. He was free to make whatever decision he thought uh, appropriate. It was also not lost on me that the Columbus District Attorney, while not bringing any charges against Mr. Elliott, nonetheless said to NFL investigators that he believed Ms. Thompson. And you should note that um, the Columbus District Attorney did not have available to him some of the evidence that was available to the NFL's investigators. For example, while he had many of the photographs taken by Ms. Thompson, he did not have the metadata to know that these photographs were uh, taken the same day uh, as she alleged she was injured by Mr. Elliott. Um, so uh, I think um, the investigation conducted by the League was thorough. It was uh, comprehensive. It was, um, it was carefully done. And um, it, it certainly provides substantial credible evidence to support uh, the commissioner's decision with respect to Mr. Elliott. Okay, at this time, Keith, we'd open it up to questions from the media. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to register a question, you can press the one followed by the four on your telephone, and you'll hear a three-tone prompt to acknowledge your request. And once again, these would be questions for Peter, and then we'll have available, as I mentioned, Todd and Joe Lockhart. Again, if there's any questions, press one for now. We have one from the line of Drew Davidson with the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, Peter. Uh, the, at least the evidence that has been made public to us said that uh, Ms. Thompson, you know, might have texted her friends to uh, quote unquote lie about or uh, wh where they were. So is this, was your conclusion more based on the photographic evidence you guys saw or uh, was it more of a he said, she said, uh, and you just kind of sided with her more than him? Well, it, it starts with he said, she said, which is why an investigation is conducted it became a lot more than he said, she said. For example, it's uncommon for women to take photographs of their injuries the day that they occurred. She did that. Uh, she sent those photographs to third parties. Uh, the examination of the metadata in her phone revealed the date on which those, date and time on which those photographs were taken. Uh, also, there were third parties who observed injuries on her body. And in real time, on the same day, she had a comment with, she had a conversation with at least one of these persons about the injury and who caused it. Uh, in addition to that, the league brought in two medical experts who examined the photographs and offered expert opinions with respect to the timing of the injuries. Now, you, you raise a question and I don't want to dodge it. You asked whether or not she had uh, made a misstatement and a false statement. Yes, she did. Uh, one of her false, her false statement that was revealed was she accused Mr. Elliott of yanking her out of a car on uh, July 21st. First, really, it's the morning of the 22nd, because I think it was after midnight. Uh, that did not happen. And she did ask one of her friends to tell the police that it did happen, and the friend had the good sense not to do that. Uh, that is true. But um, as to other statements that she made to both the uh, Columbus DA as well as to NFL investigators, she was absolutely truthful about them. And by the way, the Columbus prosecutor knew about that false statement and still said to our investigators that he believed her and he believed that the injuries that she articulated to the Columbus DA's office um, were caused by Mr. Elliott. He just didn't believe he had sufficient evidence to prove the case uh, based upon the criminal standard, which as you know is beyond a reasonable doubt, 
and that's the highest standard known to American law. Okay, Keith, another question, please, for Peter. Certainly. The next question is from line of Skylar Dixon with the Associated Press. Please go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, you mentioned that the prosecutors didn't have access to, did you use the example of the metadata. How is it that the prosecutors did not have access to things that you all did? Well, think of it this way. Various prosecutors' offices have various resources available to them. Uh, some have technology that is available to them, others don't. So that may be a question you want to put to them uh, about it, but what I can tell you is that the National Football League did examine the metadata that was in Ms. Thompson's phone uh, and, uh, to, to determine whether or not the photographs taken uh, were of the same date uh, as she alleged uh, in her statements to us and to determine the date and time of the photographs. Another question, Keith? The next question is from line of David Moore with the Dallas Morning News. Please go ahead. Hey, Peter, I believe you said earlier you talked about uh, when you met with Elliott's representatives, they basically their argument was more theoretical than anything. Can, can you talk about that a little more? Did you, did you feel they were evasive or misleading or, or, or kept information from you during this process? And two, uh, was, was the, the altercations with Ms. Thompson, were those the only uh, evidentiary points that were investigated during this? Well, I really can't speak about the investigation. I can tell you what I read in the report, but let me deal with your first question first. I don't wish to characterize uh, Mr. Elliott's representative's uh, statements. Let me put it to you this way. Mr. Elliott's representatives argued in a meeting that maybe Ms. Thompson fell downstairs. There was no witness to say she fell downstairs and there was no photograph of her falling downstairs. Ms. Elliott's representatives suggested that maybe because she uh, was a server, uh, what is called bottle service, maybe she bumped into tables. Uh, there was no witness who saw Ms. Thompson bump into tables while serving anything. Uh, Ms. Mr. Elliott's representative suggested that maybe uh, she was in a fight with another woman and the bruises, for example, a bruise to her eye and perhaps other bruises on her body were sustained in that altercation. Uh, the NFL's investigators talked to people who witnessed that altercation and it was revealed that neither woman landed a punch on the other. They pulled each other's hair, but they never hit each other with a balled up fist or in any other way. Um, the uh, Mr. Elliott's representatives also uh, suggested that maybe someone else did it, except there was never someone else who was revealed and identified as the person who would have done this. What the NFL investigators uh, learned was that on at least four nights between July 16th and July 21st, Mr. Elliott and Ms. Thompson stayed together in the same apartment, in the same bedroom. And so uh, these injuries did not just, uh, it, it, at least in my judgment, magically appear on her body. So while alternative theories are interesting, in my judgment they have to be supported by evidence, and that was lacking in this particular situation. Okay, Keith, if we could take one more call for Peter. There's no other questions at this time. Okay, good timing then. Peter, we do thank you for coming in. Thank you all for your time. And now if we can open the line for questions for Todd Jones or Joe Lockhart from here at the league office. And again, that's 140 queue up. And we have a question from line of Clarence Hill with Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, or is anything outside of domestic violence uh, considered in, in making this decision? Was this solely 
uh, the investigation solely the scope of the domestic violence accusation. Yeah, this is, this is Joe. Um, the incidents that occurred during that week in July that we've identified, that Mr. Harvey just identified, um, and the St. Patrick's Day incident uh, are the only two um, uh, relevant um, incidents that were part of this uh, investigation and this finding. Uh, no other incidents um, uh, that, that have been reported uh, were, were played a factor uh, in, this, in this finding or, or in this investigation. The St. Patrick's Day, uh, was, that, was that part of, I mean, that was investigated, but was that also, I guess, was he guilty of something, uh, personal conduct in that investigation or in that incident? Well, the St. The Patrick's Day incident? Yeah, I think as in the letter that uh, with that um, was sent to Mr. Elliott, uh, we certainly cited um, uh, poor judgment and uh, a questionable behavior. As far as the um, discipline, um, we did not think it rose to the level of uh, an aggravating circumstance to add additional time to the suspension. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, again, the, but to your first question, these were the only two things that were looked at. Okay, Keith, next question. The next question is from the line of Matt Engel with Forward Star Telegram. Please go ahead. Guys, I, I just want to, I want to make sure I have this right. Is he being suspended for a violation of domestic violence policy or personal conduct policy? This is Todd Jones. Uh, you know, the personal conduct policy has a number of uh, potential violations, uh, some of which uh, require sort of an enhanced level of punishment. Uh, but I think that the findings make it clear that there was there were several incidents substantiated of uh, physicality between uh, Mr. Elliott and Ms. Thompson that serve as the foundation of the suspension. Okay, thank you. Keith, next one. The next question is from the line of Jason Lockenfora with CBS Sport. Please go ahead. Um, hi, I'm not sure who, who would best take this or, or maybe everybody, but there had been comments from Jerry Jones throughout this process, um, more or less supporting Elliot, saying, you know, there's really nothing to see here. Um, I'm paraphrasing, but you know, he, he, he didn't think there was any, going to be any, any discipline, no real reason for discipline. Is, is there any reaction to that and just, I guess, in general, um, NFL principals or executives or coaches even commenting on an ongoing investigation? I, I don't think we have a comment one way or the other on uh, anything that's, that uh, anyone else in this case um, that involved in this case or has looked at this case or commented on this case. I can say um, uh, that we believe this um, investigation was thorough, um, uh, exhaustive, and, and fair to all parties involved. Okay, Kate, next question. There's no other questions at this time. Okay, so we'll pause there. We will make this transcript available on nflcommunications.com. And if you have any other questions, you can certainly email us. You know where we are. And we thank you for your time today. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that will conclude the conference call for today.